Yeah, welcome to meet the Danes first of all. I want to tell you a little bit about Relight, about the concept, and I want to tell you about a survey that has documented safety of daytime running bi bike lights. And last but not least, I want to give you some examples of how can you reduce bicycle related accidents by campaigning. Yes, so first of all, well, what is Relight? Relight is battery free bike lights. So spin the wheel, the lights come on. How does it work? You have magnets mounted on the spokes and the, have the light mounted on the hub. You can see here. And they are battery free. They are fixed mounted, which means you do not have to worry about remembering your bike lights anymore. They are always there and they are on all the time, also during the day. And that's very good that they are on during the day because you know, like like last night, it, it's get dark suddenly in the summertime, uh, and also when it's dusk and rainy, uh, it can be difficult to see the cyclists. And it can be stolen. Sorry. And it can't be stolen, so No, it can't be stolen because it's it fixed. Uh, it fixed mounted. That's the problem with the other lights which you put on. Exactly. The and exactly. You forget them and then they're away. That's the. There are different versions. There's also a version with a built-in capacitor that charges up a little bit of energy while you cycle. So when you stop for a red light, it will keep flashing for a couple of minutes afterwards. We also develop a steady light version. If any one of you are from the Netherlands, I can yeah, see. Yeah, that was my question. And we develop that one for countries where flashing light is not yet allowed. Not yet. Okay. It might will be. You never know. <laughs> yes. In 2004 to 2005, there was a big trial in the city of Odense, made together with the University of Aalborg. This survey document, documented the safety of daytime running bike lights. It actually showed that when you wear fixed mounted um, magnet lights on the bicycle, you can reduce the number of accidents by 32%. And surprisingly, the effect was actually biggest in the summertime. It was about 40% in the summertime, where it was 32 all during the day. And you may ask, what's the reason for this? It's because in the summertime, you don't worry about bike lights. It's not the lightning season, so you don't think about it. But it still gets dark outside. And as I said before, you have gray days in summertime as well. And it's like in Denmark, it's actually by law that the cars have lights on all the time. Should be the same for cyclists. It's about the visibility, basically. This survey also showed that you can increase a cyclist's feeling of safety by 85%. And this has been very important, for example, for the city of Copenhagen, that the cyclists feel safe. And there's many things to do so the cyclists feel safe. This is one thing and there's plenty of other things. But you guys know more about that than I do. <laughs> This survey also changed the legalization in Denmark so that flashing light became legal. Yeah, that's so that's your, that's, that's your reference. that's your way to go. Read read more about <laughs> the survey. As promised in the beginning, I also wanted to tell you a little bit about how to reduce bicycle related accidents by doing campaigns. Um, in Denmark, each fall and each winter, the police go out and check the cyclists whether they have light on or not. And if they do not have light on, they get a fine of 500 Danish kroner. So what Odense City did, yeah, they um, made a cooperation with the police, so that when they stopped a dark cyclist, um, they, the cyclist got to choose between getting a fine or getting a set of relight. Of course, most cyclists chose the set of relight version. Uh, and this campaign has run several times with great success, also in other cities. Um, Odense City uh, has a cyclist action plan to get more people to cycle. This plan um, has a concept of many different things. One of their aim is that in 2012, 50% of the cyclists in Odense City wear battery-free bike lights. And you may ask yourself, why do, is this an aim for the city? They have calculated that it can decrease um, police uh, reported damages among cyclists with 10%. And it's also good for the environment and it's a cost-free solution for the cyclist once the light is bought. Because you don't have to worry about changing your batteries 
and think the battery is going flat and not working anymore and things like that. Yes? Another campaign that I want to tell you about is a children's campaign. It's made by uh, the Danish Cyclist Federation. Um, it's called, um, yeah, it's a children's campaign and it's for fourth grade. It's a very, very popular campaign. What happens is that they send a box out to, uh, to the teacher and th this box has teaching material, posters, material for the parents, information sheets about how do I choose the correct bike light for me and my children. Um, especially the te teaching material. It's very helpful for the teachers, that's what we heard. Here they can teach the people, the, the students about induction power. Very, very simple. And they get, get good ideas for tasks that the children can do. Um, and there's different other things about lightning and reflectors. It's also a reflector campaign, not only lightning. And the campaign has two characters. There's Ludwig, he's the clever one, who knows how to use the light and reflectors correct. And then there's Panda Paul, who think it's a little bit difficult to do this right. Uh, and the children can reflect in those characters. There's also a website that's funny for the children, and so on. There are many elements in this campaign. And if you're interested, I will be happy to tell you more. Drop me an email, and the Danish Cyclist Federation can also tell you more. But what's most important is that the teachers actually think that it helps. Nine out of ten teachers says after the campaign that the children are remembering their bike lights and they are more aware of safety in traffic and why it is important. Now they understand why they have to remember them. So it's, so it's not a hassle for them anymore. Yes? So any questions, just ask because we are not that many people, so that yeah, will work. Actually, I just had a question about the study that you had done um, yeah. with respect to the flashing lights versus a solid. Did you compare the two and yes. if there was a difference? In, in that survey, there was 4,000 cyclists. 2,000 of them were real lights and 2,000 of them was a control group, you can say. So they biked as they normally did, but they're normally bike lights or none maybe, but, but as they usually did. So that was, so you compared how it was before, you can see. So yes. But, but sorry, was that, I'm just curious to know about the flashing versus the non-flashing, like the solid. Um, yes. Because that's something that... The, the survey made was, that was made was actually made by the first version that we had that was without the built-in capacitor, so that only flashes when, you, when the bike is in motion. Okay. Uh, so the survey's results are based on this model. Oh, I see. Now, are and, not the, and not the steady one. Is it possible that you'll do another survey to see if the steady one, like I'm just curious to know if there's a difference, because I know yes. where we are as well, the, the flashing ones uh, can cause problems because they're actually quite distracting. Mm. Yes. Um, and, uh, so, you know, a lot of the people prefer the solid ones, especially on the back, especially on the front, actually, as well, when they're coming towards you. So yes. I'm just wondering if, if that's in the future to do a study between the two. You never know. Maybe the Netherlands will uh, make a survey like that to change the legalization. <laughs> yeah, well, when we, when we saw the process, uh, yes. uh, first day, uh, every kind of this, this light, this tiny LED lights were, uh, were not legal. But in practice, it was that, that almost everyone used it yes. because it's more practical. Yeah. Yes. But then the thing happens that you forget it. At a certain moment, yeah. in some municipalities, uh, you, can, you could still get a fine for it because mm. you have the very tiny ones still. The, uh, mm. the, you, you measure this in lumen, which is a measure for the intensity of light. But they were so tight or the batteries were empty that at a certain moment it was national legalized, but still uh, it has to be, and it can also be on your uh, on yourself, yeah. yes. mounted, but uh, the thing is still that it has uh, also it has improved safety, yes. but still uh, the, the flash is not is not allowed because of the same thing that is tracking. But, but what I can tell you is that this is the most popular version in Denmark, yeah. the one with the built-in capacitor. Most people pre prefer that one, and we sell all three in Denmark. So the flashing one are most popular. What I was going to say that. I